Hello Architects, this is Archive and today we are going to be discussing the future operators that are coming in the next 3 months. First, some introduction of the banners in January. Since in the last video, we stopped at Executor Alter, AI Alter. She will be featured in future guides. Skill used will be S1 M3, but S3 M3 is also recommended because of the ridiculously ridiculous whole map elemental damage shielding with nice numbers. And with AI Alter, you will have no more problems with elements damage soon, or in the far future. So AI Alter, together with Shining, Nightingale, and Lumen, will officially be the four healing throne beholders. With these four medics, you are expected to have a fun time on Rhodes Island. However, I must mention that the elemental heal does not work on units who cannot receive normal healing. So another big L to those operators, like Mudrock and Helago. So Aya Alter is the gift you might be awarded when trying to get Aya Alter. Her good side is that she can keep being immortal if you have enough DP. However, she is not really the model that Flag Bearer theme was waiting for. Her stats aren't low, but in 2024, when we already have Yato Alter and Texas Alter, she is not really the fast CD operator we need. And then, one of the best joint operation banners, especially for beginners. Lee is a situational card especially for enemies that deal stun that cannot be eradicated fast enough, which in most of the cases, is the boss of the stage. Penance is a decent operator, especially good in dealing with weak and swarms of ranged enemies. A good choice for new players without my rock. Molna changes the game, one of the best characters in the game, almost a must for all players. Ozywise, a decent sniper, with a helping hand, a total upgrade of Swatch. Sorry Swatch provides more tactical gameplay with the placement of the helping hand, though the ideal total DPS of S3 M3 of 140k is quite hard to achieve. Despite this, the defense reduction from the helping hand is good enough if you want to brute force against enemies with very high defense. Now, pulling recommendations for free-to-play players. Only Molna is worth the pull. If you already have Molna, then you can skip this banner. If not, you can try your luck but make sure to have at least 100 pulls in your pocket for the future banners. It is always better to hold your own faith in your own hands. Next, the banner that I've already mentioned 500 times alongside Air Alter, Typhoon. Try your best to also get a Typhoon. She will also be featured in the guides. She's a very strong sniper for both beginners and AFK players. For beginners, her S3 is one of the best boss killing skills with the global lockdown and deals ridiculous amount of damage to very high defense enemies. For AFK player-wise, you only need to use her S2 two times, and her ridiculous DPH will make you amused. Recommended skill to mastery will be S2 M3 and S3 M3, and try to get the module to level 3. Next, we have Dorothy. Dorothy is a very fun character surrounded by the bomb mechanism. The module makes her even better, and one of the best clones for Mole's Eye for ranged units due to her high attack speed and base stats, as well as the decent attack range. She also has a role in the sequel of Fire Within the Sand, providing vision with low cost, but overall, it's something that can be overcome when you master the map. Next, Jessica Alter. One of the best mechanisms in the game to change direction after deployment. But she's a defender with very cute attack range. And if you are expecting a defender to deal more DPS than an actual DPS, and if that really happens, does it make sense? No. So despite her game-breaking turn her hit mechanism, she will not be on the recommendation list. And next, Chapter 13 Preheat Banner. I'm going to be honest here, Haunts is overrated. Although she might appear in some AFK guides, but not on this channel, alongside Mizuki. There is no point training a 6-star from 0 to S1 M3 when somebody can also do the same stuff. Ines is actually a good operator for all of the modes, and with the new CC and CN, obviously preparing invisible enemies for the sake of making Ines look good, Ines might be the real daughter of the producer of Arknight. She is only going to be better and better. However, if you already have a full flagpipe kit, Maybe you can skip her. Last, Stainless. A fun operator. So, should you get into this banner only for Ines? No. Go get the friend with Ines in the support unit will be enough. Hodera. A crusher and a character who existed so long in the story. His kit is quite contraindicating. 
only if his second talent is an aggressive one instead of this weird defensive shelter talent in among all of the offensive kit. Hodorestet is like Skadi S3 M3, but Skadi has the Abyssal theme buff. On top of that, you might argue that he equipped a stun mechanism. But nowadays and in the future, you can expect more and more boss being stun immune, and non-boss units don't need stun to be killed. The most important thing here, when considering if or not to pull Hodera, is to ask yourself, do you use Skadi? And do you need two Skadis? And the next limited banner, Virtuosa and Viviana. Virtuosa is a ritualist, which her kit focuses on elemental damage, and in her case, will be Necrosis. Different elemental damage do not stack, but they have their own skill bar and will have certain effects upon full skill bar. For Necrosis, the enemies will receive the OT and decreased attack for the period. Virtuosa can be a core in low end guides and exceptionally good for players without core DPS and need to stall enemies. She is still a decent answer for some enemies in the late game, so a decent investment. For now, since all of the enemies have zero elemental damage resistance, you can see her as somebody dealing true damage. Recommended skill will be S1 M3 and S3 M3. The last Virtuosa, unfortunately, lost her candle bomb skill when coming to Rhodes Island. You can see her as a long-standing Surter. When Surter prioritizes on heli drop strategy more, Viviana is more to the long-standing type of DPS. However, if you really compare her with Surter, she can only be considered as Surter Mini Minus. Her stats and skill numbers are relatively behind when compared to the new operators and new enemies we are facing in 2024. Overall, try grabbing one Virtuosa and save the rest of your pools. After all, this game is not actually quite demanding of your box. Of course, you can pull whatever you like when you have the basic game experience assured, which is the reason I am here, only to point out those operators that provide a substantial amount of addition to your basic game experience. There is no point in getting different operators with similar roles. As an example, if you already have Hoshiguma and Seiya, then Blemishai might not be a priority. Same goes for the snipers. If you already have Exuzai, Blue Poison, Platinum, Arkito might not be that needed. After all, when playing this kind of game, the most important thing is to have control over your resources, have enough risk-taking space for your game experience. Okay, Architects, I think this is it for now. Thanks for the sponsors of this video, and yep, I'll just stop it here. Goodbye!